Okay, the missing piece to my trainer collection puzzle, the Wahoo Kicker Snap, Wahoo's wheel on smart trainer. Today, we're gonna to go through the unboxing, building, and I've got an hour long first ride session that I'm gonna put this to the test on. Let's get stuck into it. Okay, this is the fun part. In the box, we have uh, another box, and we have another box inside the box. Inside the box. Okay, let's. All pretty easy so far. I can't wait to find out what's in these. For now though, the unit itself, let's have a look. It's all assembled. So no assembly required. The resistance unit's on there. We'll take its hat off. Well, that has to be one of the easiest ones to get up and running. Okay, it's got a bit of weight behind it. A lot of that's in the flywheel as well, but the actual build of the unit is quite solid. That's, uh, yep, good so far. But let's get it aside now and have a look at what's inside these other boxes. Okay, box number one. We have Aussie power cord. Brilliant. We have, oh well, we'll go through this one first. The power pack, we'll compare that one to the original kicker in a minute, just to see if they're the same. So power pack, excellent, Wahoo, thank you. We have a skewer. Really heavy duty skewer. Brilliant. We have, what do we have? Oh, we've got some stickers. Always fans of stickers. Wow, well, again, okay. We have the important pro. You know what we do with those. Thank you for becoming a Wahoo again. Thank you, Wahoo. And the all important manual. Box number two. I can't even guess what's in that. That covers the first box. This is. Definitely a surprise box. Just trying to think what else would be in here. No, that's it, let's... Oh, it's a front riser block, hello. It's Christmas. I didn't realize we would have one of these. Oh, wow. That's, uh, we may even need to do a review of just the riser block. This is definitely a nice addition to the kit, but if you know my previous videos, I don't think anything will replace the infinitely adjustable yellow pages. We'll use this one today though. So stock standard box contents there. Uh, good to see they had a skewer. Some trainers don't come with a skewer. This one doesn't come with a cassette for good reason. Remember this is a wheel on trainer so there's no compatibility issues there. Aussie power cable. We have the power pack. It took longer to take the cable tie off the power pack than it did to actually unbox the whole thing. So that goes to show how easy these things are to set up and untangle. There we go. Got it. Cool. Power, power. Um, and yeah, with the, with the addition of the block, the, the block and stickers are kind of handy as well. So give the kids the stickers. I'm sure they'll stick them somewhere. Uh... Oh, I've just noticed the stickers have ass kicker. <laughs> So here's the power pack for the snap. Here's one for the original kicker and kicker two. They look very similar. And output 12 volts, five amps, 12 volts, five amps. Brilliant, they're both compatible. That makes my life a lot easier. So the kicker snap has the same power pack as the kicker ones and the two and the one. To cover off a few of the technical specs of this trainer, it'll support a maximum resistance of up to 1500 watts. 
it'll simulate a gradient up to 12% and the power accuracy is around about plus or minus 5%. So we'll put that to the test with my bike today with a couple of power meters on it. Just a few close up observations before we put the bike on. Uh, this clamping mechanism is quite nifty and nice and sturdy. Over this side, we've got quite a bit of adjustability here and a ring to lock that in place. It's also a steel roller, so it's important you have a clean tire when, always when you use one of these. Uh, the flywheel itself, let's put that side by side. Up against a Tour de France yellow one, you can see the difference in flywheel size there. It's a little baby one. A little bit less weight in this flywheel, but I think the inertia from the rear wheel on the bike is going to help out with this. Okay, time to get the bike mounted. So I've wound that as far as it goes. We'll open up the cam here. Leave that for adjusting. Now we don't have to take the wheel off. This is new to me. Now the skewer that I use is equivalent to what's come with the unit. So I'm going to leave my skewer on there. Mounting up, there's a few little sort of notches in there for the optimal placing for that. And that's too loose on there. So definitely not tight enough on that. I'll need to adjust this side. Okay, so we'll pull that out a little further. Locking that in place. Lining the teeth up on that bracket much better. There we go, locked in place and that isn't going anywhere. We want to make sure we preserve the life of that roller and we don't get it all roughed up because a roughed up roller will chew through tires so we keep the tire nice and clean. If you're doing a lot of hours indoors, probably five or six hours plus a week, I'd recommend getting a trainer specific tire and maybe a separate rim as well to put on to save you wearing through your good road tires. Today, I'm just using my Roubaix Pro and making sure it's nice and clean. The next thing we'll do is make sure we've got the correct tire pressure in the rear tire. The manual says inflate to the recommended tire pressure. Well, recommended is a bit of an art, not a science. And usually on the sidewall, you'll find the maximum inflation pressure. I'm gonna go with 100 PSI today on this. We'll see how we go. Now, onto where the rubber meets the road, well, the virtual road. The manual states, once we have contact with the tire, so the resistance unit just touches the tire, which is just there, so I just have that touching, so just, well, now it's just touching. They say two full turns of this knob. Finding out where two full turns is is hard. Here's a hack tip. Mark on the knob, 12 o'clock, and we give it two full turns from there. One, two. And with two full turns, if you still encounter any slippage, they say go quarter turns from there. So let's have a quick pedal of this. Onto the power pack. Uh, very easily accessible power plug on here. Now into the power meter. Let's see how much draw has on this thing. It's pulling around one watt on standby. And one last thing before we kit up, we'll make sure it has the latest firmware. So we're using the Wahoo Fitness app. Add new sensor. It's detected the snap here over Bluetooth. So it's flashing away. And there is a firmware update. So let's uh, complete the firmware update now. Firmware update complete. And the final step before the workout is to do an advanced spin down. Okay, 10 minutes into the ride on the kicker snap. Everything should be warmed up. I'll do an advanced spin down. On Zwift here, I had a bit of tire slippage on one of the very steep climbs. So I've turned the knob a quarter turn. 
which is handy that I put the mark on the knob itself. So quarter turn on that and no more slippage. Okay, now the advanced spin down. Sensors, add new sensor, kick a snap. Connected, okay, we want spin down. Advanced spin down ensures optimal power values. Okay, it is time. Okay, we have a three minute warm up for this. Okay, up to 36k an hour for the first spin down. Okay, back up to 36k an hour. Almost, it actually is identical to the, uh, the new firmware on the Kicker 1. Okay, so we have some stats here. Brake strength, 1.72, spin down complete. Happy days. Sensor info, that's now stored. There we go, brake strength. So, we should be good. Firmware updated just before as well. That now completes the setup of the Kicker Snap from start to finish. It's now time to put it up against my PowerTap P1 pedals in workout mode. So, 50 minutes of riding, and then we'll have a look at the data after this. Let's go. My 50 minute ride became around two hours of riding yesterday on the kicker snap after I forgot to press go on the element bolt. So halfway through my hard workout at the 50 minutes using erg mode, my bolt went to sleep with the auto, uh, auto shut off and I didn't realize because I had the music blaring. So a bit of a missed opportunity there for erg mode, but while I was watching it early on, the numbers were tracking pretty well. And then I joined later on in the day, the hump day ride, the Aussie hump day ride, 300 plus riders here every Wednesday night, which is, uh, Two laps of Watopia, or two laps of a course, and then the last lap of a race. So this is testing the just riding along, just riding along in a bunch, and then the race mode, and a few sprints at the end as well. So let's dive into that data now. Over to my favorite website on the internet, DC Rainmakers Analyze Tour. What I've got here is the full ride of the Aussie Hump Day ride. So we have about an hour 10, with the power tap pedals up against the kicker snap power. And what we see here, here's the start of the ride, so we'll cover this now. This is just the, just riding along, just riding along for about 40 minutes or so there. Those numbers track very, very well. I was quite surprised. This is probably one of the best trackings that I see between a power meter from a smart trainer and the pair of pedals that I'm running there from PowerTap. So a few short spikes in here, just diving in there. The tracking of those is pretty Pretty close on. It's a few watts here and there. Remembering the kicker snap is plus or minus 5%. And that's tracking along really, really well. Let's look at the race lap. So we're up around, well, I think the race lap for me was 350 watts average. Um, going above and below that for quite a lot of that section there. Uh, there's a drop out there we have from the power tap pedals. Um, I won't look too deep into that one for the moment. So I'll ignore that, but you can see here the accelerations, decelerations, and spikes are all pretty good, and the responsiveness as well, so they track up and down very, very close. So looking really, really good there. At the end here in the sprint, I think I'll pull this one out part a little bit further. Response time's good, and the snap just seems to overshoot the pedals. See, they track perfectly, but it's just a bit of overshoot there by, oh, it's about 50, 60, 70 watts there. So I'll need to look further into this to see whether it's the pedals that are low or the kicker snap that is high, but it's sort of to be expected with the tire on trainer. There's gonna be a few separations there under extreme conditions and that final sprint there, I'd call it an extreme condition. More data required though, but look, overall, what we can see here is absolutely brilliant. There's no big separation there. And I threw in a couple of really short sprints right at the end and the response time and the peaks are quite good. A harder one there at the end. The slight separation of one second there between those two data points you can see there could be simply just how I press go and how they're recording data. So you're always gonna have a little bit of off there, but other than that, they look really, really good. 
scrolling down to the overall data, so the mean max power graph. Separation there through the sprint, so that would be the 15 second area, but then as we get down to a minute, and as we get closer to the five minute, that's spot on. 10 minute is almost identical, it's less than a watt off, and it tracks really well through to the hour there. So power wise for the setup that I have with kicker snap, that's a thumbs up from me. So since the kicker snap is about two years old, I do have the benefit of having the latest firmware and it's gone through a few firmware revisions. I've trawled through the forums and had a look at all the problems people have had and people have reported. And I've gone through the list of recommendations from Wahoo. And using all that information, I lined all the ducks up and I was quite happy with the numbers that I saw from this unit. If you're reading the power from the kicker snap itself, it's recommended you do one of those quick spin downs, so a few seconds at the start of every ride or after 10 minutes as you start your ride. The reason being is because tire pressure can change, tire condition can change, and that resistance knob as well might not be in the same spot. So the recommendation is, and that's the compromise with a cheaper unit and a wheel on, to get rid of those variables is to run one of those quick spin down sessions 10 minutes into your ride. To do the quick spin down after 10 minutes of riding on Zwift, you don't need to quit the program. You can go to the pairing screen, diselect the kicker snap as your smart trainer, perform the quick spin down, takes a few seconds on either your head unit or with your mobile phone, and then repair your smart trainer, and then away you go. If you have a power meter on your bike, the spin downs probably aren't that important because you're reading power from the power meter on your bike and using things like Power Match, recently introduced to Zwift, you won't have to worry about the numbers coming out of the snap itself. It just becomes a smart resistance unit. A few other important things to cover off here, the sound. It's not loud by any means at all. It is definitely quieter than the Kicker 1 and Kicker 2. Not quite Neo level, but this thing doesn't have too much noise to it, which I was quite impressed with. Next up is tire wear. I had a quick look after two hours of riding and some pretty hard riding too on this unit. And with the, well, I have a new tire on, so that kind of helps as well. It's a new roller. There was no specs. There was no bike tire dust at all, which is common with a few other trainers. Finally, onto the most important aspect of this unit. What's the ride actually feel like? Well, I'm a big fan of direct drive trainers. I'm a big fan of high inertia trainers or big momentum in that flywheel to be on top of the gear. This unit during the HDR ride yesterday, I wouldn't have known I was on a direct drive trainer or a wheel on trainer. So that's a big tick in my box. I was just focused on the ride and on that last lap, I was focused on the race. Even opening up that sprint and jumping out of the saddle and ripping up the handlebars, the unit was stable. I really couldn't tell the difference. So that's a big thumbs up from me. So there we have it, my initial review of the Wahoo Kicker Snap. Would I recommend the unit? Well, as long as you can get everything lined up correctly, that, that is the tire pressures, taking time to do the spin downs and having everything set up right, so you know, good ant signal and your environment set up nice. The power numbers were great. In that sprint, I'll have to look further into that in case it's gonna be robbing me of a few watts at the higher end from a standing start sprint. If you're looking to purchase this unit and want some more views or reviews, I'll put some links below in the video description. As always, thanks for watching. Your comments, likes, and subscriptions are appreciated. We'll see you soon.